coverage you can count on. Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 6. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm David Carroll. And I'm Cindy Sexton. We're going to begin with a live look at the airport this evening. There you see Vice President Mike Pence has just arrived and he is uh, greeting a crowd that has assembled there in Chattanooga as he begins to make his way to the UTC arena. President Trump will be holding a rally starting at about an hour at the UTC arena campaigning for Marsha Blackburn, who is running for the U.S. Senate seat currently held by Bob Corker. It's a close race with Blackburn and Democrat Phil Bredesen, who was also in Chattanooga today. We have team coverage of today's event from wheels down of Air Force One at the Chattanooga Airport until the president takes off tonight. We are also live inside and outside McKenzie Arena where the rally will be held. Channel 3 has you covered. Yes, lots of people still out here wanting to get in to hear the inside. Uh, to get the, to the inside of McKenzie Arena to hear President Donald Trump speak tonight. Still a lot of people out here waiting to get inside. Just, it's been a very eruptive and explosive and energetic inside the arena. Congressman Chuck Fleischman just took the stage. He exited just a few minutes ago. He started with saying that it's Donald Trump time in Tennessee. He says he's been asking for President Trump to come to Chattanooga for a while now, and that's obviously been granted as hundreds of people, thousands it looks like, are waiting for his arrival. All right, it's a live look. There you see a really good angle of seeing the vice president as he is working the crowd there. President Trump accompanied by Vice President Pence and Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn, the Republican candidate for Senate in Tennessee, opposing Democratic candidate Phil Bredesen in a very hotly contested race on Tuesday's ballot. Of course, they're, they're all coming down those stairs together, but we know, of course, that the vice president and Marsha Blackburn did not fly in on Air Force One, but they are with the president now to greet the crowd. Not everyone got in, Cindy and David. I just spoke with a couple of people out here. There's at least several hundred, if not maybe a thousand people out here who told me that they were turned away from McKenzie Arena from the rally because that they're at capacity. It's a full house inside there. They told me they had tickets. They registered to be here, but there was not not any room there. So that's the situation that we're seeing out here, but that's not stopping them from staying. In fact, they said that they're gonna see if the president drives by this area here at McKenzie Arena, and then they're gonna watch the rally from a jumbo truck. By the look at this crowd, there doesn't seem like there's an empty seat in this arena. We see mega hats, just people filled with signs all over this arena. We've seen uh, earlier this um, in the, when we first came in here, it was announced to the crowd that the floor space and the standing area in front of the the president's podium was at capacity. Oh, we've seen some flashing lights. Let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Flashing lights, that's got to be the motorcade right now. That means President Trump is on his way, should be turning up here soon. And distinct privilege to introduce to you, my friend, the 45th president of the United States of America, President Donald Trump. David, Cindy, we were ushered into a holding room where the president was standing uh, with some other dignitaries before he made the walk out to the stage just about five minutes prior to his uh, stepping out onto the stage here at McKenzie Arena. We got a chance to ask him about a few topics. He addressed things such as how he plans to govern if the Republicans lose the House. And he also talked about some of those late night, early morning tweets. Here's what he had to say. Mr. President, you, you just mentioned your uh, your big crowd you left in Georgia. Yeah. To what do you attribute the numbers? We've got a record here in Tennessee yeah. as well. And they had a record in Georgia. We're having records all over. It's just really hot. Uh, people are loving the Republicans. They're loving what we're doing on the border. Uh, you saw the numbers come out, the financial economic numbers on uh, Friday with 250,000 new jobs uh, for the month of October. And uh, they're just, I mean, we probably have the best economy we've ever had in the history of our country. And, you know, we, we're doing well. <laughs> when you talk to these people that you see in the crowds, are they talking to you more about the economy or more about their concerns for uh, immigration and things like that? Yeah, it's a great question. I think they're talking about everything. They're really happy with the economy. They're happy with jobs. They're really benefiting and they're happy with the tax cut. They love the regulation cut because their companies, or even if they, whether they own the company or they work for the company, their companies are doing well. But they're doing incredibly well. I mean, we have the best economy that we've seen, I think, ever. I mean, basically, they're saying ever. So when those numbers came out, it was a very good time for them to come out because they came out on Friday, and we have the big election on uh, Tuesday. 
And I have to say, Marsha Blackburn has been incredible. She's, uh, she's really been a star. She's been all over the state. She loves Tennessee. She loves the people of Tennessee. She'll be a fantastic senator. I hope it works out. Let's use that to transition into why a visit here. You won Tennessee by a sizable margin. You won uh, Alabama by a, a greater margin. Georgia, you won as well. Um, it, is this visit seen to, seen to try to convince people to go to the polls? I know when you were in Florida the other day, basically everyone said they had early voted. What's the, what's the, uh, the, the mission for trips like this? Well, this was really set up about four or five weeks ago, you know, because it, it's a, there are a lot of logistics. But regardless, I love the people of Tennessee. I like being here. And we want to make sure she gets in, I guess you could say. She has a nice lead, but you still have to go out. You have to vote. And so I said, let's keep it. Let's just keep it. She's doing really well. She's a, a great person. The people know her very well here, as you know, and she's doing well. But I said, let's just keep this. It's Tennessee. It's a, it's, it, you've treated me so well, so good. I treated... Uh, I treated my family to a little bit of a uh, surprise the other day. I was showing them some of the numbers from Tennessee, and this was a state that we did very well. If the election doesn't go your way, if the Republicans lose control of the House, how will you govern? Will you consider your, your, the last two years of, of this first term being a lame duck presidency? Well, look, I wouldn't have... Uh, I certainly want to see it go well. I think we're doing very well. We're certainly doing well in the Senate, but we even have to worry about that because you never know with elections what happens. But I think we're going to do really good in the House. I think we're going to have some good surprises. And if for some reason that doesn't turn out to be true, I'll figure it out. That's what I do. I always figure it out. You have to. You have no choice. Your presidency could be described as uh, unconventional. You said figure it out. Is that the way you envisioned it when you um, came down the stair staircase and decided to run? Well, I think so. And I think we've done more. Even the enemies give us uh, the people that are against us. And we have a group uh, and they give us credit. We've probably done more. Pr probably the word is now definitely more than any other president in the first two years. If you look at the tax cuts, if you look at all that we've done with regulation, the military, the veterans, veterans choice, and all of the things that we've done for the military, you know, we're rebuilding our military, $716 billion. And we need it. You know, we have to have it. It was very depleted. It got so depleted and terrible. So if you look at all that we've done, uh, nobody's done more. You look at health care things. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, right to try is something that they've been trying to get for many years where you can use the system if you have a an illness if you're terminally ill or you have an illness, you can use medicines and things that are coming up in the pipeline they've been trying to get that for many many decades we've done more than anybody's ever done in the first two years and uh, we're really happy about it we're in great shape as a country some say you've you've done it with a heavy fist some of your late night early morning tweets cause firestorms on morning shows by the time the rest of us get up is that stream of consciousness is it uh, a way to get issues into the, uh, the the policies into the the argument before things get rolling well it really is and i don't get treated fairly by the media so it's a way of going around the media because i have no choice i mean we go around the media and we're able to do that and it's been very, very successful. And I think really without social media, I don't call it tweets, I call it social media because it's a whole broad array. But without social media, I wouldn't be able to get the honest word out because we have not been treated fairly by the media. And that's even been written about. You know, many people agree with that. And so through social media, I can get the word out. And you're right, it's also a way of putting ideas out so people can start talking about them. But we've done a lot. We really uh, like it. And you see the kind of crowds we have. We have thousands of people outside that can't get in. So that's a good feeling. One more question for you before we get the wrap here. You've got thousands waiting for you out there. How do you reach the moderates that won't come to a rally, that don't uh, wear the red baseball caps? What uh, is your plan for that? Because the races are so close in yeah. so many states. But I think we've reached the moderates. You know, the moderates want to have border security. And I'll tell you, we've really reached women. Uh, they said that uh, for 16 that maybe I wouldn't do well with women and then we did unbelievably well with women and we're doing well with women right now because they want security, they want financial security which we're certainly doing a great job with but we're also giving great border security, great military security. When you look at what our military does when they go to that border, look at the way they have that secured up already. We have the best military, and we've had to do it over the last two years because it was so badly depleted. Women want security, and they get security with me, and they don't get it with the other side at all. Mr. President, thank, thank you for you. your time.